trout rods, salmon rods, striper rods, helmet rods, downrigger rods, lead core rods, spinning rods, and more. If you want a high quality, high performance rod that won't let you down out on the water, go to fishhuntshoot.com and check out our selection of high quality, high performance fishing rods. Howdy folks, Cal Kellogg here. It is September 24th and it's time for a Northern California fishing report. And uh, I guess the term that would best describe the fishing right now is inconsistent. So let's get into it. Um, river salmon fishing, the best guys are catching fish. It is not easy out there. It's not easy in the Delta. It's not easy all the way up to Sacramento River, all the way up to, to Red Bluff and beyond. Um, the best guys that are grinding, that are putting in their time, the fishing ranges from fair to good. Um, for guys that, that don't know their stuff, um, it takes time and luck and proper technique to get on any fish at all. Um, I know one lady who's gone out on four trips and only on her last trip did she hook and land a fish. So, you know, it's not easy. If you're into river salmon fishing, by all means, get out there. And undoubtedly, the bite is going to improve somewhat as we go into October. But uh, I'm predicting, and I think a lot of folks would agree with me, all in all, we are in for a fairly disappointing river salmon season this year. Um, it's a bummer. You know, salmon are in crisis. They have been for a long time, and uh, that crisis is just continuing. Um, striper fishing. Striper fishing is up and down in the delta. There are fish there. Some days they bite. Some days they don't. Some days the fish that you were on yesterday are gone today and you can't find them. Um, but overall, the fish are flowing in. This is a very common pattern in late September. Um, the, the fish tend to scatter throughout the delta. There's a ton of feed out there. They scatter, they move around, the water's still fairly warm. So we're gonna see the bite really pick up when those fish kind of start to settle into areas. And that is, you know, largely based on temperature. When we start to see those water temperatures come down significantly, we're gonna start to see those fish start holding. And that's when we can really get on the fish and be successful, whether we're trolling, bait fishing, plugging, whatever we need some consistency from the fish in terms of location where they're feeding where they're holding um, the hardest stripers to catch are fish that move to a new spot every single day and fish that aren't schooled up fish that are in small pods three four five six fish that are on the move you know you got to be at the right place at the right time to get after them again um, just like salmon fishing, if you love striper fishing, by all means, get out there, start fishing. You're going to catch fish, and you're going to be in position for when that bite goes from, from fair to good to very good to excellent. You're going to know where they're at. You're going to have it pretty dialed in, whether you're a troll or plug or whatever. Whatever your preference is, start putting in your time now, and you're going to start catching fish. Um, you know, west of the traditional striper areas down in Sassoon Bay, there are good numbers of sturgeon. They're holding in deep water. Wind is a factor. Um, there's no doubt about it. But if you want to put in your time, you want to soak eel and row, if you can get anchored up, you know, in some deep water, um, you're likely going to catch sturgeon. You're likely going to tag a keeper. And uh, if you've got some of those sturgeon tags still kicking around, the clock is ticking, man. It's almost October. So if you're going to fill those tags, you better... You better get after it. You better get on it. Um, October is traditionally a great month for sturgeon fishing. It's it's often overshadowed by the striper action. But, uh, you know, if you go down there off Pittsburgh somewhere, anchor up off the edge of the channel, throw out a live bullhead, throw out some row, um, you've you got a chance to catch just about anything. So there's a lot of fish moving through those, those kind of middle ground areas in the upper reaches of Sassoon Bay where it starts to transition into the Sacramento and San Joaquin rivers. Um, Kokanee fishing, it's winding down everywhere. Um, king salmon fishing, uh, landlocked king salmon fishing. Um, Oroville is still kicking out some very nice fish. You gotta put in your time, gotta find them, but they're, they're there, they're available. Um, fish up to about four pounds. Um, good action for deep water trollers. The bite at Folsom is actually more consistent than the bite at, at Oroville right now. Um, and it's, it's a power trolling bite. You go out there, you pull spoons, whether you pull my speed spoons, speedy shiners, crocodiles, you know, needle fish, um, wh whatever, whatever your, your brand of spoon is, 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 is the favorite, um, go out there, run those coppers, run those chromes, uh, run them fast in that 2.3 all the way up to three mile an hour range. Um, the fish are down in the main body, um, 40, 50, 60 feet. 
find the bait, find the marks, grind on them, and you're going to catch some fish at Folsom. Um, salmon bite for Folsom is very good. Some guys are getting limits. Um, more typical scores anywhere from two to four fish per day. Um, and there's definitely five pounders in the mix. There's six pounders in the mix. Your average fish is 16 inches, one pound. Um, I was out there the other day. We got our top fish was over 20 inches, about three pounds. Um, great quality fish. They're fat, they're frisky, they're beautiful. Um, moving on to trout fishing, man. That's my passion. You guys know, if you watch the channel, you know I am a passionate trout angler. And uh, we are in the trout fishing transition right now. And whenever that happens, whenever we start moving from the late summer pattern to a fall pattern, the fishing slows down. Why? The trout scatter. Some trout are still holding deep. Some trout are up near the surface. And those trout that are near the surface at most lakes, the surface temperature isn't perfect. So those, those fish are kind of, you know, they're kind of, they're kind of yo-yoing up into that water and moving down, up and down, up and down. And again, when fish are, are moving a lot and they're scattered, they can be tough to catch. We're seeing that at Shasta. The fish are scattered from the surface all the way down to, you know, 70, 80 feet deep right now. So guys that troll up there a lot, they're grinding, they're catching fish, but it, it's far from wide open. It was wide open a couple weeks ago. It's not wide open anymore. They're having to work for their fish, move around a lot, work the depths, you know, and, and, and work different patterns. But that bite, uh, like all the other trout bites, they're going to come together. Um, Elmanor, same story. Fish are in transition. Some fish are still deep. Some fish are up top. Eagle leg, same deal. Some fish are deep. Some fish are up top. What we, what, what, we, what we see around us, what I can tell you, I live here in the Sierra foothills. Obviously, the days are much shorter. I was up early this morning, and uh, we didn't have fishing light at my house until probably 10 minutes to 7 at best. I mean, it was still pitch dark at 6 o'clock. Um, the days are significantly shorter. The nights are cooler. We got a, we got a little, little shot of hot weather coming up. I'm hoping this is the last shot of hot weather. Um, and we're also going into a full moon phase. We're about halfway there now. Um, I'm predicting if we don't see a, a significant, you know, rise up in the temperatures, I'm thinking the period after that full moon passes, so a couple weeks from now, I think we're going to see the high Sierra trout bites, Eagle Lake, um, Shasta, Elmanor, French Meadows, you know, pick your poison. I think once the next full moon passes, we're going to see the trout action really ramp up. We're going to see more fish up near the surface. And those trout that are near the surface, they fight better, they bite better. And uh, when they make that, that move to the surface, they're really starting to put on the feed bag. Instinctively, they know that the cold, lean months are ahead and it is time to feed. They've been down deep. Those fish are going to be in great shape. They're going to have plenty of energy. And they're going to be aggressive. It's the time to power troll, speedy shiners, speed spoons, big flies, plugs, rapalas, that kind of stuff. Cover ground, um, cover ground, cover ground, find those aggressive fish, and then, you know, really kind of dial in your approach. But uh, we've got some very exciting action ahead. Um, this weekend, Deer season's open, you know, across a lot of, of Northern California. Um, the National Forest, we're still seeing partial, partial closures, and I urge everybody out there to be extremely careful if you're out in the woods. Oh, here comes a car. I'm gonna pause for a second, and we'll pick this up in a minute. Speed spoons. Troll them, cast them, or jig them. If you wanna get aggressive with trout, get a set of Cal Kellogg Speed Spoons and get your fish on. Available at the fishhuntshoot.com website. That was kind of cool. That was a, an old yellow Chevy four-wheel drive. That truck looked like it drove right out of the 70s, man. There was, a, there was an old, uh, old backcountry dude in there. He had some firewood and some other stuff. So anyway, see a lot of folks that live out here in the deep woods and uh, they kind of stay to themselves, but you'll see them driving these roads. Anyway, as I was saying, if you're going to go out hunting this weekend or into next week, until the weather changes, really, you need to use a lot of caution because fire danger is extremely high. I saw some guys online complaining that, well, our season's opening and they're not going to allow us to camp over here and there's not a fire within 50 miles. Well, that's true. Um, what they're not seeing on the news, I mean, they're, they're alluding to it, but they're not saying it. We're in a crisis situation here because the fires that are burning now are so big, they're so widespread, now we have a shortage of resources, firefighters, aircraft, 
the whole deal. Those guys have been working for weeks straight. So it's not that there's, you know, a fire in your hunting area. What the fear is, is that another big fire or two breaks out and uh, we just don't have the capability to, to, you know, make a significant impact on those new fires. Um, it's, it's really a nightmare here in the foothills. We all live in fear of fire. Um, and it's a real fear. You see these, these massive firestorms erupting. So use extreme caution. I remember one of those big fires last year was started by an old gentleman working in his yard. All he did was he was driving a, a just kind of illustrate the danger. He was driving a metal stake in the ground. He said he drove the stake in the ground. He went in the house. I think he was going to make some coffee or make lunch, whatever. He looked out his window and his entire backyard was on fire. And, and the fire just spread from there and got crazy. And it was just because there was one spark created from driving that metal stake in the ground. And this guy was an old kind of kind of type farmer, rancher kind of guy. Been doing it his whole life. Um, obviously knew the danger and stuff like that. But in no way expected that if he would go out and just drive something in the ground, he was going to start a massive forest fire. But that's what happened. Um, so use caution. Stay safe. We've got some great days ahead. We've got some great fishing ahead. Um, the big trout are going to be up on top, and we've got a lot of big bucks, big bears running around in the woods. And, of course, you delta rats, you know what's coming. There's going to be some great striper fishing, some solid sturgeon fishing. And, uh, you know, the second half of October is going to see some great plugging out there for stripers. If you're one of those guys that likes to throw the top waters or wants to try throwing those top waters, that period from about October 15th until, you know, probably... Uh, early November, depending on the temperature, all the way up to Thanksgiving, those big bass are going to be in the shallows. They're going to be looking to looking to smack some baits, and uh, this is a great time to get your feet wet if you've been dreaming about plugging for stripers. Anyway, I'm Kel Kellogg. Um, hopefully next week I'm going to have some even better news to report. Maybe I'll uh, have a picture of me with a big old buck or a big old bear or a big old trout or something, something like that. Anyway, for now, stay safe, stay healthy, be careful with fire, and I will catch you next time right here on YouTube. Guys, I want to thank you guys for all the support you've given the channel. If it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be able to do this. And uh, it is an absolute pre uh, pleasure bringing fishing information to Northern California and beyond. Thanks, guys. You have a great day, and I will see you soon right here on YouTube. I'm Kel Kellogg.